I got eight do's and don'ts when it comes to setting insurance appointments over the phone. So if you're interested in improving your appointment setting ability, then this video is for you. Number one, do sound upbeat and lively. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are calling over the phone, you're talking to a stranger. They don't know who you are. They can't figure out if you're legit or not. So you gotta make sure that every edge and advantage is positioned in your favor. And your tonality is a huge one. How you sound over the phone makes a tremendous impact on the ability of that prospect to agree to an appointment to talk to you further in person. So make sure that you sound upbeat and lively. Sound like somebody who is enjoyable, entertaining, interesting, because that increases your odds of actually setting the appointment. Don't sound mundane and boring. And of course, the inverse of this is true as well. If you sound boring, if you sound mundane, you won't get appointments. In the marketing world, being boring is the worst sin. If you sound like you're halfway asleep when you're calling your prospects and you sound disinterested and unenthusiastic, guess what? Your prospects reciprocate and you won't get that appointment booked. Number three, do expect hearing no a lot. Hearing no is part of the job. Don't expect to get into insurance sales and setting appointments thinking you won't hear no. Further, expect to hear no on those appointments that you eventually will book. Here's the thing, a lot of people just have knee-jerk objections to setting an appointment with a stranger. And sometimes that no doesn't even really mean no for real. It's just kind of a reaction to somebody that they're unfamiliar with, that they're not quite sure of dealing with. Of course, the solution is to respond to every no with a rebut that overcomes that objection, sells why you should book the appointment, and then offers two times to close that is a yes or a yes close as opposed to offering an option for a no. Again, no is a part of the job. You will hear this every single day of your life. In fact, you'll hear it way more than you hear yes, so you need to be equipped to overcome those no's because behind some of those no's, there is a yes waiting. Number four, don't expect every lead to be laydowns. Now, I want you to kind of think about this for a moment. If every single lead that you called to set an appointment said yes, how good is that appointment really? I mean, think about it. If you don't really have to try that hard to book an appointment, how will that person booking an appointment with you react when somebody else calls on them to set another appointment to sell them an insurance too? Well, probably what's going to happen is, is that that person's going to have that agent in, might be easily convinced to buy from them, thus replacing you, and you end up with the chargeback and a much more frustrating situation on your hands hands and you figured you would have. Here's the point. You actually want pushback. You actually want to hear objections when you're booking appointments because the vast majority of agents aren't as well trained as you're learning right now. And they're not going to know how to overcome those objections. They're just going to like, you know, freeze in the moment, hang up, get frustrated and blame the leads, blame their training, blame everybody but themselves. But you, on the other hand, now know how to overcome these objections and anticipate them and appreciate when you get them because the more that you hear, the more you will book and and it's a lot harder to get into those appointments to close than it is the laydowns. Long story short, appreciate the objections and pushbacks that you get. Don't expect everyone to be a laydown. They're great when you get them, but you should be ready to overcome objections, anticipate no's, and appreciate those closes because those are going to be a lot more stronger closed deals than the ones that were laydowns anyway. Do everything to resolve every lead. Whether you're buying leads or you're having your leads sourced from your agency, your responsibility, your prime directive, as we would say in Star Trek, is that your job is to resolve every single lead that you get. Now, when we say resolve, what does that mean? That means you need to get a delineated yes or no from every single lead that you talk to. I don't even think it's the no's that take out agents in this business. What I think it is, really, is the maybes, the people that never pick up the phone, the people you never talk to that could be opportunities, but never manifest because you can never get those people to talk to you. Of course, maybe you're experiencing some pushback in the sense that you've called these people a number of times and never pick up. So let me give you a couple of tips that will help you increase the resolve rate so that you get more opportunities to set appointments. Number one, triple dial. This is where you call the lead. They don't answer. You call them immediately again. They don't answer for the second time. You call a third time. This is what we call a pattern interrupt. This gets the client thinking that this is an abnormal call, not a telemarketing call, and it breaks the pattern of what they expect. So therefore, they're more likely to pick up. Sure, they'll be a little like surprised and wondering what's going on, but as you go through the process of setting the appointment, you will now have the opportunity you never 
otherwise would have had, which is the ability to get into the door and hopefully sell the person. Also consider texting. I like to tell my agents to text, not immediately when they get the leads, but after calling once or twice, triple dialing both times, of course, and then send the simple text message, their first name, the client's first name, with a question mark. So if I got a text on my phone and it said, Dave, with a question mark, I'd probably be a little curious. Like, first of all, they know who I am. Second of all, I don't know who they are. So maybe they know something that I don't. And that kind of has a sense of magnetically drawing me in to then participate with a stranger, otherwise where I may not have considered it. What do you do from there? Well, at that point, you just text your normal appointment setting script to then book the appointment to go see them. Or you can just give them a call. They'll probably pick up because they've responded to you. They're wondering who you are. They're curious in the moment. So they're much likelier to pick up the phone. Do not buy too few leads. So for all that we've talked about, about skill set improvement in this uh, particular video, the truth is, is that the insurance game is a numbers game. At some level, you have to have enough people to talk to to realize the opportunity that you want. A big mistake new agents make is buying too few leads. They don't invest not only in the right kind of leads, but in the lower quantity amount that's not going to give them the opportunity to be successful. For example, for a face-to-face -face agent and final expense, my recommendation is 15 appointments weekly. But not all your leads are going to set appointments. You might need closer to 30, maybe even 40, to get 15 completed appointments a week. Whereas if the agent only bought 20 or 25, the odds are that much lower to get 15 booked appointments versus the 30 or 40 leads to get the same amount. To keep it simple, just make sure you're always drowning in leads. You want to have the best problems in life, not the worst problems. There's nobody on earth, rich, not rich, successful or unsuccessful, that has zero problems. So as somebody who's aspiring to be successful, aspire for the best problems. So what are the best problems you're asking? You should have too many leads and not enough time to get to them all. Yes, that's frustrating, but at least you know your schedule's booked and you're seeing people every single day and most likely making sales. And that compares way better than the alternative, which is too few leads, which leads to too few sales, which leads you failing the business. So choose the best problems in life. Have too many leads. Do practice your script and record yourself. This is the number one piece of advice I give every single agent in my agency and those out of it. Practice and rehearse your script, and more importantly, record yourself practicing and rehearsing your script, then listen for opportunities to improve. There is nothing short of the actual script training and development and coaching that you're going to get, hopefully in your agency that you're joining, that the actual listening of yourself setting appointments. You will hear so many mistakes that you thought you weren't making as you're listening to it kind of after the fact that you're gonna have such a great opportunity to see things that you can improve that you otherwise wouldn't have if you didn't record yourself. One of my trainers in my agency named Joe Bush who sets appointments and sells final expense face to face, before he gets on the phone, he rehearses the script five to 10 times, also going over the likely objections he's going to experience. So by the time he picks up the phone, he's confident, he feels good about what he's doing, and he has a great opportunity to be prepared to book the maximum amount of appointments that he's given. And finally, don't ever ask for permission. Always assume. One big thing that I've noticed training agents over the years, especially in final expense, Medicare, et cetera, really doesn't matter what kind of insurance, is that agents don't close the right way when booking appointments, and especially not the right way when they're overcoming objections and closing for a time to speak. If there's one thing you take away from this call when it comes to the skill set development of setting appointments, it's this. Never ask for permission to book your appointments. Here's an example of how that sounds. If I close my appointment setting script by saying, can I come by at three o'clock? What are the possible answers that the person could say? Well, the client could say yes, and that would be great, but the client could also say no. Why? Because we ask permission, which by default means the client can answer yes or no. And let's think about it. You're a salesperson. They don't know who you are. They're probably busy like everybody else in life. And when you offer a no, what do you think the client's gonna say? No. So here's a solution. Don't offer no's, only offer yeses when you're booking appointments. Here's my script to better define how I mean. I'll be in your area tomorrow and wondered if 10 o'clock or two o'clock works better. It's pretty much that simple. Would you like me to come over at 10 o'clock or would you like me to come over at two o'clock? So you can either say, Mrs. Prospect, yes to the 10 o'clock or yes to the two o'clock. And while nothing in life is perfect that eliminates all problems, this kind of setup and script frames the question in a way where the client is more likely to answer yes than had we asked a yes, no permission based question. And one last thing to clarify, this gets more perilous 
as you start to overcome those appointment set of objections, I've realized listening to calls for many years now of my agents, this is the biggest screw up on objection rebuttal training is they get into the heat of the moment, pushing back against clients saying, I'm busy, I'm not interested, I've already got insurance. And they say the rebuttal great, but what they don't do is close with confidence. They don't even close at all. Sometimes they'll just say, hey, all it takes five minutes, no problem. And then they just kind of just drift out there when the client's just gonna say no again. So you have to have and express that confidence that you're convicted to see them by then saying, so how about 10 o'clock or does two work better? So always be closing after every objection rebuttal attempt. So that's my eight do's and don'ts when it comes to setting appointments for insurance. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing and liking. If you enjoy this training, we do daily videos like this every day. And I invite you to check out how working at DeFord Insurance Group works. Go to daviddeford.com. You'll see more about how we help agents become top producers in final expense, Medicare annuities, and ACA. We have a lot of different sales and marketing programs professionally taught by top producers, including myself. So check it out if you're looking for a home and you really value mentorship and support. Thank you for watching.